Welcome to another episode of the New Leaf Podcast, which is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Carmen, and I'm the host of this podcast. I live in the Netherlands, and um, you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl. I also have a website, newleafdesigns.nl, where you can check out all of my blog posts and my uh, paid and free patterns. And I will list all of the other uh, things you can find me at here. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you uh, for checking out my little podcast. Um, actually, we're getting really close to my um, podiversary, <laughs> which is basically a podcast anniversary. Um, I started actually in 2016 in september i think with uh filming dutch podcasts and uh but in april of 2017 i decided to continue uh, with english podcasts and um i'm really happy that i made that decision and because it's just uh, it's just made the podcasting thing a lot more interactive for me because podcasting is not really a thing yet in the Netherlands. So um, yeah, I'm just I'm just really glad I made that decision. And uh, my first English podcast was published on YouTube on April eleventh, two thousand and seventeen. So I'm very close to my first. English podiversary and uh, we're almost at 4,000 subscribers and I think that's just amazing. I know that when I when I went from Dutch to English podcasts I had around 300 subscribers um, but after I went to English I saw a really rapid increase and it kind of snowballed from there so I really want to thank each and every one of you for watching, for subscribing, for liking videos, it just means a whole lot to me and um, yes, thank you. <laughs> so um, I want to start off with mentioning that we have a knit along going on at the moment uh, in my Ravelry group which is the New Leaf podcast group you can find all of the details on that it's called the striped and stranded knit along and it's for my newest pattern which is the striped and stranded socks I'll show you the socks once more oh, I just love them so much I I'm really being really um how do you say this? Like I'm not wearing them really often so I can, you know, I'm just really being really gentle with them. Um, yes, and I am knitting my second version at the moment, although I haven't done anything on it in the last two weeks because I'm supposed to be doing the heel and um, when I took this with me to knit on it, I forgot to take smaller knitting needles with me, which I need for any non-color work part in this sock. Um, so uh, I haven't, I haven't progressed any further. I actually should have moved the kitty, kitty progress keeper up to right here, but. Um, yeah, so it's time to put the heel in and I'm using a lavender shade of West Yorkshire Spinners for that. And you can see that my purple version has a lot of thinner stripes than my green version. And um, I really, really like both versions. I like how... Um, it's almost very subtle 
whereas this really looks meticulously planned, which it was. <laughs> um, yeah, so the trick is uh, using a self-striping yarn so you don't need to um, weave in a lot of ends. So there's only um, three yarns involved in this one, but you can do with only two. So you need a self-striping one if you want to get this effect. Uh, you need a contrasting yarn, which is the dark green, and then I uh, used some minty green um, because I didn't have quite enough of the green one and because it was, I don't know, it was a nice contrast. Um, I've never done contrasting uh, heels and toes so that the heels and toes contrast from each other. I haven't done that uh, previous to this sock and I really really like the effect. Um, I won't be doing this that for this one though as I have a lot of this yarn. Uh, this is a hundred grams and I probably only need like 10 grams for heels, cuffs and toes. But Anyway, that cowl is still ongoing at least to the end of April. Um, and I might even prolong it further if um, if there's any need to do that. Uh, keep on sharing your progress with Striped and Stranded Cal, uh, the hashtag on Instagram and Facebook, and also hashtag Striped and Stranded Socks. I love seeing the Striped and Stranded Socks that others are knitting and um, yeah, I'll, I'll be sharing some of them later today on my Instagram story. So, if this video goes live, it's probably not available anymore, but um, I love Instagram stories, so I'm doing a lot of those. <laughs> um, yes, I don't have any finished objects this week, but I do have a pair of socks on the needles. And I'm using a lot of different yarns. <laughs> I have a whole basket of yarn and uh, I'm knitting some scrappy socks for my boyfriend and I finished one. I actually started started this ooh, helicopter. I actually started this um, sorry, easily distracted. I actually started this sock uh, a couple of weeks ago before I filmed my previous podcast, but the basket is usually downstairs and because I record upstairs, and the project wasn't in the same room, I just kind of forgot about it, which is super sad because I love these socks. They are crazy and um, I get to use up all my scraps. Well, not really because, yeah, it would need, I would have to make a lot of pairs of socks for me to, to use up all of this, but um, kind of oddment like this. Uh, I can use those, but I have, for example, this ball, I have only knit scrappy socks with it so far. So I've used it here. I really like this micro striping effect. It's even better on the other side. Um, yeah, but I've knit one pair of scrappy socks before and I was using this one. And I'm using it in this pair as well. And there are, well, there's just a lot of commercial yarn that I'm just, uh, I haven't knit before and that I'm just using for these socks. But, um, but some I have already knit a whole pair from and I'm just using the scraps. Do you remember this? It's my, um, is the Trailing Clouds yarn in the London Underground colorway, or is it the, pla no, not the platform, Mind the Gap colorway. And I have made crazy uh, knee-high stripy socks, and this is a scrap from that. There's also some in here. This I thought was masculine enough for um, my boyfriend, but these with the uh, pink and blue, I'm 
going to save for myself. Same as with this one. I thought it was a little bit too feminine to put in here. Um, yeah, so I'm using a lot of fun colors. And I am knitting the second sock. I've just done the heel this morning. And the uh, pattern I am using is the toe up recipe of the Sakmatician and it's a recipe with a uh, heel flap and gusset heel and it's a really really nice fit for um, yeah just bigger feet I think if you have a um, large instep and my boyfriend has huge feet so uh, yeah he really appreciates this uh, this type of heel uh, I usually do a short row heel uh, on socks and um, they fit me really well, but uh, my boyfriend, um, he likes the gusset heel better because, um, yeah, just gives him a little bit more room. So I'm almost done actually, but this has just been my on and off project for the last couple of weeks. I do hope to finish it soon because yeah my boyfriend was actually supposed to get a new pair of socks for last christmas so yeah <laughs> i really have to finish this one i have been working a lot on my melly cardigan which is a pattern from pom pom quarterly and i'm gonna have to get up and get the issue because maybe i can read it from here yes it's issue issue number 20. so issue number 20 uh the melly cardigan pattern by camille russell um and it was a mess last week and i couldn't really show you properly but now i have joined the shoulders so it's like a waistcoat at the moment <laughs> And I just love this yarn. It's uh, All the Moths in the World by Craftfulness, Craftfulness Yarns on Etsy, um, which is Sandra's Craftfulness on Instagram. And uh, I just fell in love with this colorway ever since Sandra used it for uh, a, a so faded sweater, I think. And the Melly cardigan uses this it's they call it a B stitch and it's uh like uh like loose strands well not really loose strands of yarn but kind of like loops pull up loops and they create this uh, little V shape um and it's really cute so it's reverse stockinette so the pearl side is the outside or the right side it's curling up like mad but um yeah i still haven't uh, i still have the button band to do and i'm doing that um i'm modifying the pattern a little bit because in the pattern the button band is knit as you go um but i feared i wouldn't have enough yarn of the main color so I did a contrasting button band and because I am alternating skeins so I have two skeins of this at all times and I'm using two yarns held together for this button band that would mean that I would have four skeins attached to my project and I do not want that so I am knitting the button band later on so I have finished well kind of finished the body uh, except for the button band and now I have moved on to sleeve number one and this is sleeve number one well in progress and you may think that this doesn't look anything like a sleeve and I would say that you are right but that it is actually the start of a sleeve and um, I don't know if you saw the pattern pictures, but it kind of, the cardigan has a bat wing 
um, fat wing sleeves and they rapidly increase just on one side or on both edges but they only increase um, downwards so to say so here it stays straight and then you have these bad wing um, sleeves so yeah I don't know yet what to think of this <clears throat> because yeah I just don't know yet but I'll have to knit and see what I think of it yeah so the first part is really steep increases and from here on I um, I will increase less often so it will be um, less of a, a slope but still um, every time I finish a couple of rows and I kind of try it on I'm like what? because this is insane but yeah um the pattern pictures all look fine so and i'm knitting the smallest size sleeve so it should be fine and i did leave well i did modify the body but i did leave um a gap um, like the armhole just as big as the pattern set so I didn't modify any of that so I should not modify the sleeve so yes this is the plan and I'm sticking to it at least until I finish one sleeve and kind of pin it into place and try it on and then I will see <laughs> <laughs> nervous laugh um yeah and then i will see what to do but yeah i think it will be fine and i am digging this color um contrast i or this color combination i even bought a skirt to match this cardigan when it's finished well i i didn't go looking for the same colors per se but I just came across this skirt and I was like, yes, this is going to be perfect. So I'm so looking forward to this. And um, yeah, this has been my happy knitting project. And uh, I brought the yarns out to show you for the um, ribbing because I don't think I did that last time. So um both are Scapius yarns, so commercial yarns. Uh, this is the Scapius R Tribe colorway, uh, col uh, the Scapius R Tribe yarn, in a kind of faded olive color. It's kind of a. Well, it's not really olive, but it's kind of a foresty green, but kind of paler green. <laughs> don't know how to um, explain it, but uh, I paired it with Scapius Alpaca Rhythm in this turquoise colorway. Uh, these are called after or named after dance moves, so uh, it might be Polka, it might be Charleston, but yeah, it's it's alpaca in a turquoisey color and um, I'm using them together because I did not have a DK yarn and stash for the ribbing and I really like this marled color effect. Yes, it's really nice. Um, yeah, so I'll be happily knitting along on this while I listen to my Harry Potter audiobook. I am almost done with the last one. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll be moving on to other books after that. I'm so loving the Harry Potter uh, audiobooks, but, um, as, 
Kyla from Arctic Nets uh, commented last last episode. Um, the last few books always make her quite sad, and I do have to agree. The last few books of Harry Potter, listening to them, I'm just feeling very like gloomy and just sad. Yeah, but it's still an amazing story and yes, just amazing. But I've already figured out or I've already picked my book um, that I'm gonna listen to next. And uh, I'm not gonna pronounce the whole title because YouTube might ban me or something. <laughs> uh, but um, I saw it on Undercover Otter, which is a uh, indie dyer from the Netherlands. I saw it on her Instagram stories. She was uh, listening to it from the same audiobook app. Um, and it's the simple art of not giving a F. <laughs> and I think because I always overthink things and I always stress about things that that book might be the kick in the butt that I need. So, and it's it's gonna be cheerier than the last volume of Harry Potter. So, or at least it's gonna put me in better spirits, I think. So, who knows? But that's, that's my next book that I'm gonna listen to. And another question that popped up last time was what App I am using. I am using the Storytel app, which is a app that at the moment is, I think, only available in the Netherlands um, because it's all in Dutch, but it does have English books on there. Um, but I only chose it because I could not use Audible, which is available in most other countries, I believe. Um, but yeah, I I could not um, use Audible while having a Dutch bank account, so yeah, but it's uh, Storytel is cheaper anyway, so I don't really care. Although there are a lot of books on Audible that are not on Storytel, so it's like... It's, it's like American Netflix vs Dutch Netflix, because Dutch Netflix is... Um, I'm looking up like, oh, I can watch Zodiac, or I can watch uh, another uh, different movie, or, you know, Harry Potter movies. None of them are on Netflix uh, in Holland, but um, yeah, some movies that I do want to watch are on the American Netflix or on the German Netflix, and it's just infuriating, but... Enough about that, this is uh, a knitting podcast, <laughs> last time I checked. So, um, moving on, I actually have some non-knitting to talk about right now, so that's ironic, but um, yes, I did some natural dyeing experiments last weekend and it was a lot of fun. Um, I don't know what you guys do on Easter uh, holidays with uh, family, but uh, we always just eat until our clothes don't fit anymore and then go out for a walk because we feel bad probably because we ate so much. So we, <laughs> we uh, went on a walk it was hailing at the time, it was insane, but yeah, it stopped uh, really raining and hailing uh, about five minutes in our walk, so we could enjoy the rest. And um, uh, I started collecting things on our walk, so um, I saw some lichen, so some moss that grows on trees and is really crusty and just minty green kind of looking. So some of that lichen, I collected some of that because I heard it would result in a kind of purple dye. So that was really um, exciting. So I collected some of that and unknowingly I also collected some caterpillars in my pocket that way. 
um, well, caterpillars are fine, but there were also um, like those beetles with really large, do you call them fangs? I don't know, like, like clicky teeth. Ugh. So yeah, not a fan of those, but I collected some lichen. I collected some alder cones and some regular moss, but I didn't end up using it at the end. And I had some avocado, uh, avocado seeds, avocado peels, and some onion peels. I had those at home. And because I was at my, um, my parents' house, my mother gave me some white cotton fabric um, to try it on because basically all of the white yarn that I have is already dyed. Uh, so <laughs> I didn't have a large quantity of white yarn available or at least no white yarn that I wanted to dye in a different color. So, so I used the cotton uh, fabric but then I also, I just used tiny scraps of white yarn and just put it in there to see because usually dye has a really different effect on plant-based fibers such as cotton uh, as on animal-based fibers which is you know merino or wool and i got a well i wanted to say rainbow but it's not a rainbow uh, they are um a lot of earthy shades um yeah mostly oranges, browns, yeah. So um, first I dyed some alder cone. So alder cone are those tiny, they just look like really tiny pine cones, you know, you know what I mean? They, they grow in clusters on trees and then they just fall off. So I picked some of those <clears throat> and it was really underwhelming. <laughs> it's just a um, yellowy, well, kind of a dirty yellow, light brown, sandy colorway, a uh, color. Um, but on the wool, it's actually much more interesting. It's this really nice mustardy color. So that's interesting. And then I did a second, um, I took this one out of the dye pot, which is just in an, an uh, aluminum pot. And all of the fabric I soaked in water with alum beforehand, so as to bind the color more effectively to the fiber. Uh, so I took this one out of the dye pot, then I put in some vinegar with the remaining uh, cloth in there and uh, some lemon juice because I read, well, just um, changing the pH of your dye bath can affect the color. So that means either making it more more or less acidic. So I um, I used some lemon juice and some vinegar and it basically did not change. This one is a little bit darker, but you know, it was in the dye pot longer than this one. So maybe I should have just added the vinegar from the start and then it would have the effect. I'm not really sure why it didn't work. But anyway, I, I did give it a try. Uh, then I did yellow onion skin, which is really, really fun. Um, it's a kind of pumpkin, uh, pumpkin orange color. And it's really, really dark on the uh, merino that I put in with it. It's kind of a brick red color. And I did the same uh, vinegar <laughs> treatment for the second piece of fabric in there, but it didn't really yield a different color. It just 
Yeah. This is a more solid color, but that also makes sense because when I take one piece of fabric out of the pot, this can be submerged much more easily, so maybe that's why it's more solid and not because of the vinegar. So it just, uh, yeah, I did something wrong, I think. But it doesn't matter because it was still a lot of fun and I got this pretty color. Uh, then I tried pink onion. And pink onion is something that I came across in the supermarket just a while ago and they taste really good. Um, so side by side. Um, it did seem a lot darker when I took pictures of it earlier, but it doesn't seem like a lot of difference. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of difference between the colors. Also, the yarn, yeah, it's almost the same color. So the yellow onion and pink onion were almost the same. Then I used avocado seeds. Uh, so the, the big seed, I used two of them in one pot. And uh, it's this really um, pale shade of pink. And I really like this. Um, and on the yarn, it's darker. Yeah, really, really like this. And then the avocado um, skin, well, I wasn't really paying attention when, when this was in the pot and I let it cook dry, which is why our, um, which is, why these blotches are there because it just dried up and I just turned it off. Um, got some extra water in there and um, I just left it. Um, so the avocado skin, I also used two avocados for this. So two seeds for this shade and two, two sets of avocado skin for this one. And this one is way more orangey or red than this one. This is more pink and this is more orangey red. And um, yeah, really like it nonetheless. All of these natural shades um, just seem to go together really well. So that's really interesting. Then my last experiment, with, which was the Lichen, um, was kind of disappointing because, uh, as I mentioned, I had read that Lichen was supposed to result in this purple color, or at least pink. Uh, but alas, I got an orange. Uh, the water did seem to change color. First, it was this golden syrupy, like honey color. And uh, then after a few minutes, it turned dark red. But then, you know, on the fabric, it didn't turn out that way. So the color that your water might seem is not usually the color that the fabric um, changes in um, yeah so it's, it's usually a lot more diluted so and I also did the um, this is one without vinegar and this is the one with vinegar I do see a little bit of difference right there this seems to be more yellow and this seems to be more orangey um, yes but um they are just um, kind of sandy, peachy colors. I do like the colors nonetheless, but um, uh, and it was a really fun experiment, but I don't think I will be dying with licking it and licking again, uh, mostly because it was really, um, uh, it's not that easy to find and it's not that easy to get off of trees and also uh, there were you know insects 
hiding underneath it so when I took it off I I kind of have this feeling that I destroyed their home or, or anything or as if I'm taking all their cones I'm not affecting the environment as much so I won't be dying with licking again um but the onion skins are really um you know they provide a really intense color um, and I'm not much of an orange person, but this is, um, yeah, just a very rich color. Um, I will be dyeing with avocado seeds and skins because I just love these colors and I think it's really fun. And this is the first time actually that I use the seeds and skins separately. Uh, the first time I just used them all in one pot and it turned more or less this color while I actually like this color better and if you're really into this pink natural dye and you could check out Rebecca Desnos on Instagram which is just Rebecca Desnos on Instagram and um, she does a lot of natural dyeing and uh, also a lot of uh, natural dyeing with avocados. Uh, she has a kind of bookazine, which is called Plants Are Magic. Uh, she also has an ebook out, How to Dye with Plants or something. No, 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 it's called, it's, um, it's called Botanical Color at Your Fingertips. <laughs> something with botanical. And she's just really, really inspirational. And um, she does a lot of great colors with avocado. And she even added some iron to one of her last pots, which resulted in this amazing shade of lavender purple, which I love. <laughs> and um, yes, it was amazing. So I'm looking forward to doing much more of these. Um, and thankfully I do have a lot of fabric left over and I might even use some of them, some of these fabrics later on. I don't know what to do with them, but um, yeah, at the moment they're just fun, kind of like swatches, you know. Uh, now they're just, you know, documenting my experiments. Um, yeah. Uh, but I bought some carrots <laughs> this week and you know, I uh, the carrot tops, so the uh, kind of the bushy green leaves on top of the carrot, they result in this kind of yellowy green color, so, or apparently, so I'm gonna uh, try that one next, so really excited about that. Yes, is there anything else I have to talk about? I don't really think so. Let's check my show notes <laughs> on my, uh, I just have my show notes on my phone and it's just four lines this time. And I talked about everything. Yay. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up here and just uh, continue doing some knitting or maybe some pattern revising today. Yes, um, anyway, uh, thank you all so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you did, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel or if you give this video a thumbs up. Thank you all so much, have a really crafty couple of weeks and I see you.